So it happened to me once again, out of all my stacks of paper piled up everywhere, because there was a poem or a phrase or a thought I liked, and I put it aside because someday it's going to fit in a sermon. Of course, they're in no arrangement whatsoever, but by happenstance, again, I came upon just the right sheet at the right time. So I have a little poem I found and tore out of a magazine way back in 2013 that I want to share that I think is perfect for today. But before I share the poem, what I want to tell you is I flipped the sheet of paper on the other side, and this was not highlighted, and it's a totally different article than the one that the poem comes from, but there was this line. Our visual companion for the first half of the season after Pentecost is titled The Tree of Life with the Holy Spirit. Now, how bizarre is that? Because we have a tree of life, and this morning it's covered with the signs of the Holy Spirit. The doves are a sign of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that awesome? I do not think that is a God thing. It's just a fun thing that happened. But here is the poem by the Sufi mystic Hafiz. I am a hole in a flute that the Christ's breath moves through. Listen to this music. I am a hole in a flute that the Christ's breath moves through. Listen to this music. What a great poem for the day of Pentecost in which we celebrate the coming of the Spirit, which is Christ's presence within and among us playing music through us. The stewardship team had wanted today to be the culmination of our celebration of 50 days of discovering our spiritual gifts. And again, if you didn't hear me, we've got all the spiritual gifts around the baptismal font. But the link we were using broke down, which I think actually was fortuitous because I much prefer the link we're using now. It's giftstest.com, and you can uh, pull it up and do that on your phone or email, and it takes about 15 minutes to discover what your spiritual gifts are. And then we're inviting you to print it out, or if you don't have a color printer, to send it to church, and we'll print it out. And we're inviting you to put your name on it, and then hang it up in the gathering space. It looks like this. This is mine. Isn't it cool? These are my top five spiritual gifts. And then you can go look. I, my name's on here and say, oh, she doesn't have that gift. <laughs> um, and, and under each one, it has the biblical passages. So, so do this. We're going to do it through the summer and, and into the fall and you can put it in the gathering space on that bulletin board, and we're hoping to expand that because we're hoping you are all going to do, do that. And, and we can see all the ways in which the Spirit moves through this community and all the gifts that are represented here. It's how the Spirit's breath moves through us and the music that the Spirit plays through us. As St. Paul says, there are a variety of gifts, but only one spirit, and one body that needs all of its members. There is no one gift greater than another. Our society has different talents that it values over other talents. And there are talents we can put on a resume for college or a job. But spiritual gifts are the ones gifted by the Spirit. Gifts for the greater good, or as Paul says today, for the common good. Spiritual gifts are the ways in which people are pointed to, are drawn to God, to something beyond themselves, through how the Spirit works through us. So there might be something we're super talented at, or that we can do really well, but it doesn't reveal Christ. It doesn't point people beyond ourselves to God, to the greater good, to something beyond. 
It's not inspiring, breathing in us and through us the breath of God. So I don't usually on Confirmation Sunday specifically talk about each kid, but I'm going to do that today. Now don't get nervous, the four of you. But I'm going to do it because each one of these young people is so unique. And of course, we're all unique. But they are so different from each other. It's sort of a model of how the Spirit brings diverse peoples together into one body for the common good. First off, it has to be said that Nina, Bennett, and Vicki couldn't care less about watching most sports. And I have never had to fight with Nina, Bennett, or Vicky over the remote control or a phone so I could shut off the game. And Bennett, Nina, and Vicky would never rag so mercilessly on my Philly Sixers and Eagles. Just saying. But that said, I love that the I am statement of Jesus that Zach resonated with is Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. That Christ is the one who connects us to one another. And I love that he could articulate that. In Pentecost language, it's the spirit that makes of us one body. Bennett doesn't talk incessantly like some of our confirmation students, but when he shares, it's almost always so real, as in holy ground, as in the Spirit of God is in the room. Sometimes it's so real it just cracks us all up. Other times it's so real that it moves us into silence. Bennett, your honesty has been a real gift. It's one of the ways the Spirit blows through you. Nina is also honest, but in a different and no less valuable way. She gives me great hope that the kids actually learn something from me. One day recently when we were talking about whether the Bible is fact, opinion, or truth, Nina pounds her Bible and teaches her peers. This is not... This is not an answer book. This is a question book. Amen, sister. I felt like saying, my work is done here. <laughs> I imagine one of Vicki's spiritual gifts is service. Sunday night, she asked for a broom to go sweep the steps leading to the clean teen closet because she noticed they were dirty. A while back, she and her mom put together feminine hygiene packets for the teen closet, quietly behind the scenes. Last summer, she got up at 8.30 and came to use her artistic skills to paint welcoming images on the teen closet walls. The Spirit works through each of these four young people in different ways. In different ways, Christ's breath flows through their lives to play music that others might hear and give praise and glory to God. Different music that is beautiful or challenging or sometimes funny to listen to. Each of these four has a longer Bible passage than usual to read. They each were asked to share their favorite verse and each of them chose a much longer passage or story. I was pondering that and thinking, isn't that so cool? It may have nothing to do with my emphasis on knowing the stories of scripture or knowing each other's stories, though I kind of hope that has infiltrated. But I like that they didn't stick to one verse. They wanted the whole passage. Finally, we spent a number of Sundays talking about prayer, different kinds of prayer, practicing prayers. The breath prayer worked pretty well. The body prayer was a disaster. They wrote their own intercessory prayers that were beautiful prayers that I shared in worship this spring. But before we wrote prayers, I gave them a list of all the different images of God in Scripture and invited them to try to use them in their prayer petitions. 
it was really hard for most of them. I think because we all get stuck in about five images of and for God. And I think that then affects how we experience the spiritual gifts of God, how we experience the spirit, what we are willing to value and see and name as God working in a myriad of ways. So I chose the hymn we're going to sing for the hymn of the day that most people at our hymn sing didn't put high on their list. It may be because it's a lot of words, but it's a lot of images for God. And Zach told me he learned that God is not a he. So Zach, I think you led me to choose this hymn for today. Because I think when we expand our understanding and our images for God, then we expand our understanding of how the Spirit works. And then we learn to value not only all the ways the Spirit works, but all the many people, the variety of people through whom the Spirit works, like Bennett, Nina, Vicki, and Zach, and how it makes of us one body, where no one member is more important or more valued than another because all are infused with the same Spirit of God. And all, all are necessary for the working of the body for the common good, just as God intended. We are holes in a flute that the Christ breath moves through. Listen to this music. Amen. <laughs>